Good afternoon. Today is Monday, September 10th, 2018. It is 1 p.m. We're here for the regular trustee meeting and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have an agenda before us. Are there any modifications? There's two things I would like to add just under old business, and uh, and that's just going to be a, a an update uh, from the fiscal officer uh, with regards to the detail of the past due invoices, um, and then also just an update uh, from the fiscal officer with regards to the board's request for a um, third party audit regarding the accounts payable and past due invoices. Any other changes, Alex? Did you yeah, want to make board, I would like to move around. the executive session to just after citizens to present it this week. For all three reasons? Yes, all three. Okay. Any other changes, or do we have a motion to accept as? Amended. Hearing no other changes, I'll move to accept the uh, motion as amended. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Crutch. Yes. Make a motion to accept the general ledger report in the amount of $314,558.49 for the 82918 payroll. Second. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Crutch. Yes. I accept the payment listing reports in the amount of $290,103.61 for warrants through 831 of 18. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Are we going to do these individually for minutes or? On minutes I would go order? individually. Okay. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 12th, 2018. Second. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Kretz. Yes. I make a motion to accept the regular, the special meeting minutes of March 15th, 2018. Second. Discussion. Um, and this the discussion, uh, is my comments will apply um, to the minutes for uh, March 15th and also for March 26th. And I'll read just an excerpt from uh, the Ohio Township uh, Handbook. This is put out by the Auditor's Office. <clears throat> the question was, what format do the minutes of a Township Trustee meeting um, um, have to take to satisfy public record keeping statutes? And this excerpt essentially references a prior case, White versus Clinton County Board of Commissioners, but it says specifically, furthermore, public records must contain full and accurate minutes, including sufficient facts and information to permit the public to understand and appreciate the rationale behind the relevant public body's decision. And the on the March 15th minutes, um, we had two versions circulated. On July 8th, um, fiscal officer circulated a version, and then a second version was circulated later. Um, however, the second version does not include all of the information, relevant information that was in the July 8th version. It was commented that it was the original version circulated on July 8th was a draft, um, but actually the second version redacted much of the um, relevant information. <coughs> um, and so I, I would ask that um, it be revised essentially, um, or that we go back to the original July 8th, 2018 version of the minutes and that we approve those as the approved minutes. On July 26th minutes, which we have not gotten to yet, um, there are several, um, what I think are very relevant uh, pieces of information that are missing, comments by both um, Mr. Roberts and Ms. Wallace. Um, and I can provide detail um, specifically of, of what uh, sections of the YouTube video to go back to and reference, but there were there were clear and specific questions with regards to the detail of past due charges that the township incurred, um, requests regarding uh, external audits, and 
by all three trustees, um, not just one. And those are those comments are or that commentary is missing from the minutes. And so I I would ask that they be updated and corrected. Um, but that's I, I I will vote no on both of those as far as approval. And just to clarify, you were referring to the March twenty sixth meeting. March fifteenth. Yeah. 15th, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, March fifteenth and and March twenty sixth. Correct. Okay. And I was referencing the March 15th meetings were circulated originally on July 8th and then revised after that. But those two minutes, I, in my opinion, do not reflect what the public needs to understand. Well, the March 15th ones was when we had a new assistant fiscal officer. So in her lack of or, or learning how to do her job, she did the first revision and um, then we worked on how I would do the minutes and that was the second set of minutes. So she actually is the one who caught that I inadvertently sent out her first draft to me instead of the draft that she and I had worked on. So, I mean, that is my mistake. I sent that out, but it was a draft that we worked between us as she was learning part of her job. So um, it's not, but her version is actually far more accurate. In, in your opinion, it goes into a lot more detail because she didn't know how to do minutes or how I would do the minutes if it was me. Right. So and that's. I understand, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm strictly going off what the township handbook says that the auditor's office puts out. And that's a directive to all officers and employees for townships. And the minutes from the 15th that you've revised and redacted the critical components of that, and then the minutes from the 26th of March do not meet that standard that the state um, has asked the townships to follow. So, but I'm you can you can call for a vote. So, if you want. So we have a motion and a second. Yeah, you do. Yeah, Sorry, Deborah, motion Ms. Wallace. Based on that information and the redactions of the subsequent minutes, I will vote no. Mr. Wolf, um, Robert. No. And Mr. Price. No. Motion to approve March 26, 18 regular meeting minutes. Second. Mr. Robert. No. Ms. Wallace? No. Mr. Price? No. Motion to accept April 9th, 18 regular meeting minutes. Second. Ms. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Motion to approve April 16, 2018 special meeting minutes. Second. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Ms. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Motion to approve April 23rd, 2018 regular meeting minutes. Second. Ms. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. And at this time, we have a pre-scheduled uh, pre speaker from the Beaver Creek Soccer Association Haunted Classic Soccer Tournament. Uh, Mr. Jerry, if you'd like to speak up, uh, step up, just give us your name and who you're with. Uh, I'm Jerry Graver. I'm with the Celtic Soccer uh, Club, and we're preparing for the Haunted Classic again this year. It's our 10th year. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, it was just an idea. And we, we wanted to invest in facilities, training, and equipment to better the club. And that was the goal to create the Haunted Classic. And we start off approximately 250 teams our first year. And we've grown to be the largest soccer tournament in the United States. And I think it's awesome. W the results of our effort, uh, can be clearly stated when we look at most Celtic players move on to play at Beaver Creek High School. And last year, the Beaver Creek High School team won the state championship. And the person that scored the winning goal was Robert Burnt, Ryan Brent, Burnt, Burnt, Ryan Burnt. And he was a Celtic player and he played up through our whole program. And we also had a girl that was invited to play and try out for the women's national team. So we've created through this effort, some very competitive players, very competitive teams, and you guys have supported us, and I really appreciate what you've done for us. Very good. And uh, your request today essentially is to uh, once again waive uh, tent fees. 
Mm-hmm. Um, we'll reduce it down to as yeah, what we've done in the thing. past is um, approved okay. the fee per one per site and mm-hmm. the rest the rest of them rest of them are waived. Great. Well, I think on behalf of the board, thank you for what you do and all of your volunteers and your executive committee and your whole group of uh, parent volunteers as well. So you're an asset, I uh, believe, to the community. Thank you, sir. And I think we all believe that. And, the and Beaver Creek yeah. people are awesome to work with. They really are. Yeah. And uh, I think the community is a, at large uh, and even the greater the county, the whole region really benefits from having that facility there. So yeah. you do a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to waive regular tent permit fees for the haunted soccer tournament sponsored by the Beaver Creek Soccer Association for the fee of $50 of one tent per site. Second. Mitchell. One quick comment. Um, I also, I think we, we, we appreciate that you come here every year to ask yes. in person um, mm-hmm. versus just sending an email. Well, you I, can't take you guys for granted. I mean, this is... We appreciate I mean, everybody's that. in this effort, you know. And Beaver Creek shines. I mean, we're nationally known, nationally yep. respected. But it's all a group effort here. You know, yeah. it's amazing. It's an amazing it, club. It says something when you show up. So yeah, Hera, I appreciate the Hera ODP Region Two is coming back. Who ODP's is it? ODP's coming back. The Challenge Cup. Yes. Is coming back well, next year. There's a lot of people competing for that. We want it, and we always get high marks. Our, our people do an awesome job with it. But you got to understand, there's a lot of competition to get that. We always put in for it, and they decide. It's just like putting in for the the World Cup putting in for the Olympics, you know, everybody's fighting to get it. Well, I, as, as someone who has a daughter who just has been through the top levels of that, everyone when we were in Saginaw was saying it's coming back to Ohio. Oh, well, great. Well, I, I so hope so. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you, the thing is the people, the Beaver Creek people, you, you get on the phone and, and you got your volunteers, you got your people, and they don't, they don't say, okay, I'm done, I'm going home. They say, what else can I do? It's, a, it's just an amazing group of people. You, you know, we're really blessed with, with who supports us and what we do. We're good. Good job. Thank you. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we'll accept a motion to go into executive session. Or you want to do citizens first? Okay. This time, we'll ask uh, any citizens desiring to speak uh, to step up. And seeing none. Now we will accept a motion to go into executive session under Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G1 to consider the compensation of a public employee. Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G3 conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are subject to pending or imminent court action. And under Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G4 preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. So moved. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kratz. Yes. All right, so it is 2.03. Do we have a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kratz. Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to accept the mediation agreement for case number 2017 CV 0583 and authorize trustee Tom Kretz to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Mr. Zahari, if, do you want to just give us a brief? Uh, you want to go over uh, old business first? Yeah, we'll we can do that. Do yeah. I? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Can we okay. make another motion? You don't want to, that's what I'm saying. You don't it's want under to. the administration. Okay, oh. we'll come back to that. Under old business, um, I had uh, requested that we add so two topics. One is if the fiscal officer can give us an update uh, with regards to um, on March 26, we had asked. Uh, you to provide detail of the uh, totality and, and detail of the accounts payable problem we had and how much the town, ch- how many past due invoices we paid past due and the summary of charges that we incurred. That was on March 26th. And you had, uh, Ms. Aarons, you had stated that you would get back to us after you had some time. I'll have to get back to you on the 
Because I thought that I did get that too regarding that. Because we just weren't able to pull actual numbers or the amount. Yeah, you've never actually gotten back to us. The last time I asked, you said you would get back to us. Um, when when do you think you could have some detail for us? Well, let me go back and look at what I thought I gave you, if that would help. Okay. Because obviously, if yep. I have something, then I'm going to give it to you sooner. Which my understanding is, yeah, so my understand, last conversation we had is when we discovered that there were purchase orders being issued to cover past due charges, um, and we had, the board had not been aware of that. So if you can provide that detail to us at the next meeting, that would be much appreciated. With regards to the board's request to you on March 15th, 15th to hire an outside um, third party can, um, accounting firm to perform an audit of our accounts payable. Any update on that? Also, that was addressed in an email that was sent to you. So if you want me to send it back, I can. I'm just asking, what was, what are you going to have an outside firm do an audit? I, not not right now because we there's nothing missing. There's no money missing. There was nothing that. But that's all the result of an internal audit, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and this board asks specifically for an outside firm to do a third party audit. And so are you saying you will not do that? We want an outside audit on an inside audit when there was no money missing and no, you have spent taxpayer dollars on something that there, there was nothing missing, everything was Well, I don't want to spend taxpayer dollars on past due fees when the township has the funds to pay the bills on time if they weren't hidden in a file cabinet. And yet it's a system of a larger problem as well. The so larger problem is the person wasn't supervised, hid the invoices, and then we discovered it after they quit. It shouldn't. So is the answer that you're not going to perform the outside? I'm just, it's just a yes or no. I mean, well, I, I wasn't going to because there was no money missing. So there wasn't. What they're going to come in and tell us that there was no money missing. Yeah, so mi money what, missing what was only one of the questions. Well, money missing was only one of the questions. So best practices and is the process corrected now? So that's what you would normally have an auditor come in and say. Here's the here's the totality of the problem that occurred. Here's why it occurred. Here's the corrective action that was that was that took place, and here's how it's being ensured it won't happen again. We've talked about this before. This isn't new. And yet you keep bringing it up. So Correct, because it's not it's not being addressed. So, and I have taxpayers asking me, when is this audit going to be done? And yet the the uh, the state auditor's office will be in here. They will audit that time period. It's not being covered in the audit right now, obviously. Sure. Well, we hope that it will be. Um, but again, yeah, best practices, that, that would be normal practice. I mean, does anybody else have a concern? I asked the same exact question. Does anyone else have a concern on March 26th? The other trustees voiced concerns with that. But those weren't included in the minutes that we rejected today. But I'm just asking again, am I alone on this, or is there other concern? You know, based on my budgetary experience, that, you know, you usually get an outside auditor to uh, reflect on any problems that happened and give us a, a green light or a red light or cor corrective action if needs be. So I would like to have that response. And I, and I would agree it would be normal practice just to do it, just to double check and make sure. Okay, we'll move on. We'll take that as a no. Um, any other, there was no new business um, to discuss, Mr. Zaharia, so on to the administrator portion. Thank you, board. First item is uh, grievance number 18002, article 12.7 on longevity. Uh, I received this grievance and provided uh, the information on the history of uh, the grievance to the board. I received the grievance from uh, firefighter Michener in March of uh, this year. Uh, Chief uh, reviewed it um, and gave his uh, response on April 6th. Um, uh, Chief denied the grievance, uh, listing some various findings um, in his response back to the grievance. Um, it was then sent to me uh, at my level. I did review it. Um, I did meet with the grievance. Um, I did provide my findings, and I also denied the grievance. Uh, we then went to the next step, which uh, was mediation. Um, we did uh, meet twice regarding this. Um, 
and the mediator was able to move the lease management's uh, position on this. We did offer a uh, memorandum of understanding to the union as a whole to fix this. Um, the first uh, MOU was denied. It did come back to us um, of what the union's concerns were uh, regarding the first MOU back with the mediator. We understood the union's concern, made those changes, uh, was submitted back to the union as a memorandum of understanding. Uh, it did fail again. Uh, and, the, and we did it take into consideration all the concerns the union had uh, in the mediator asked us to uh, include those changes, which we did. Uh, so the grievance is here before you. Um, I do have the information uh, that I sent to you in the packet um, of the initial grievance, uh, chief's response, my response, the um, MOU, and the collective bargaining language that's in the contract. Okay, thank you for that summary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does the grievance have any new information that you'd want to add? No. Okay, thank you. Well, that being said, I'll make a motion to deny grievance 18-002, Article 12.7, Longevity. The Board of Trustees cannot in good faith affirm the longevity grievance, which was forwarded to us. Management has tried twice to settle this grievance, and it appears as though the union is not on the same page internally. Accordingly, on these facts, we cannot affirm this grievance which disparages, divides, or otherwise separates members' benefits outlined in the collective bargaining agreement. I'll second that motion. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Craig. Yes. Okay, next item. Thank you, board. Next item is on page five of your packet it is the Agenda for tonight's meeting. I did meet with the superintendent last week. Uh, this will be a regular meeting for the school board tonight. So they, as you can see there, it says regular school board items. They will have to take care of some regular business uh, during tonight's special meeting. Um, but it will be here tonight at 6.30. Uh, very similar to what we discussed last time. Um, the school board superintendent will be um, providing also a levy presentation as well. And that's just for information. If there's anything that you'd like to be added, I will add it before tonight's uh, special meeting. And it is here tonight at 6.30. Anything mm -hmm. you'd like to see added? No. I'm, uh, I've attempted to have dialogue and conversation with our state representatives um, and our state senators regarding how our schools are funded. Um, it's fallen on deaf ears for the last four years. Um, so it's the school essentially is dealing is playing the the, the hand they've been dealt um, but uh, my issues are more broad at a state level uh, when you compare um, ohio school funding to for say Col colorado school funding um, and how they're structured and, and their property taxes are fractional compared to what ours are yeah, you, so. you may hear that again tonight in regards to that the, the ohio supreme court ruled in the state of ohio that School funding is unconstitutional, right. and our state legislator has done nothing to fix that as of that yeah. rule. So yeah. it does put the all school boards in the state of Ohio in a catch twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the comment that I received back was, uh, "If you come up with a good idea, let us know, and then we'll work on that for you." <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you, board. Next item is on page six of your packet: is the sheriff's office by weekly report. Are there any questions? I don't have any questions, but I would do, would like to uh, advise the sheriff that it seems like the traffic on 35 is is increasing uh, quite um, speedily. I see trucks and cars uh, bypassing the speed limit on a consistent basis, and I would like to kind of keep an eye on that or sure. have them uh, patrol that a little bit more. Yep, I'll pass that on. Any other comments or questions regarding the sheriff report? I have none. Okay. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 20 of your packet. It's the bi weekly report for HR. Are there any questions? I'm, I'm going to apologize and go back to Ms. Wallace's comments. Sure. Um, one question that was asked of me, and I, I wasn't sure of the answer, was 
uh, with the number of uh, trucks that run the red lights um, and other vehicles uh, that goes through those intersections. Um, as far as red light cameras, is that an ODOT call? Is that that is that a, ODOT. That's, that's what I answered. Yeah. I, said, I believe that's not a township or a city call. That's an ODOT call. That's correct. The, the lights okay. that are on US 35. Which creates a whole other level of is it legal or not. Yeah. But um, That is an ODOT issue. and Because and if a CDL gets a run the red light, um, it, it's a major issue. Uh, and they do it consistently. Right. So. Okay. All right, HR. Are there any questions? I don't know about with the report. I had none. I had none. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Zoning. Next item is the property maintenance code. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions with the Zoning Commission and uh, some discussions either uh, during the budget process or uh, in reorganization of the Zoning Department of adopting a property maintenance code. Um, one thing looking into the process for townships, we um, originally informed the board that it would have to go through the Zoning Commission for approval and then the board. Um, we don't have to get approval from the Zoning Commission. They are aware of it, um, of the property maintenance codes. They do support the property maintenance code. Um, so for you, in front of you is the resolution adopting the um, property maintenance code. Um, what we, we are looking at and reviewing is some townships have adopted this and then whatever version is in place, um, that's the enforcement. Uh, so we will re re review this every year to see if there's a new version out of property maintenance code. Uh, if there is, we'll come through the same process to adopt the latest code. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are there any questions? I know it's a very lengthy resolution, yeah. so I would recommend adopting it as presented. As presented I think yeah. you did a nice job though. Okay, I uh, would, uh, Ms. Brown and uh, Mr. Amrine did a lot of work, mm -hmm. uh, working also with Don Frick on this, um, to make sure that, that uh, uh, they not only looked at the process, they looked at other townships, they even went out and met with other townships to uh, see how it works for them, uh, any pros and cons that they've dealt with on the property maintenance code. Good job. I had to take credit for the resolution. I got it uh, yeah. from Bullcrump to get this council, and it's really the appropriate. But I think it's important to review these things and, and keep ourselves up to speed yeah. so that we, you know, we have problems, we can at least address them in the correct way. And I think this update is, is good for the township. Yeah. A couple of just real quick questions. The, um, <coughs> is the township in compliance with everything that it's asking the business owners to comply with, with all township properties? <laughs> okay, and I don't. I, I didn't. Ex it came to my mind as I'm reading this for the fourth time that when we ask uh, business owners and residents and um, commercial property owners to abide by a set of rules that the township doesn't abide by, um, that's I have a problem with that. Well, uh, we and this and putting it in writing allows us to enforce any, and allows yeah. us to enforce it upon anyone else right. other than ourselves. Right. Well, we will. We can force it upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we choose to, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, it's no different than the fire code. Uh, in fact, it's the same um, organization that puts out both. Um, yeah. The, you know, uh, an inspector has, if once we adopt this, every property is going to have to meet these standards, whether owned by the township, owned by the schools, or owned by a private individual. I understand. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are, the, are the township properties in compliance with the code that we're looking to apply to anyone else? I can't say for sure, but they will be after the adoption. I mean, to the, the best of my knowledge, the township properties are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, Lori's out there. So that's the know. first <laughs> test. That's, that's no, the first I test. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, um, that's very important. Right, because yeah. when you point your finger at someone else, yeah. there's three more pointing back at you. <laughs> three more pointing back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and then the second question was, do we have the capacity to enforce it? as far as not from a legal standpoint, but from a um, pe Personnel. people power. Yeah, and this is, uh, quite frankly, when we did the reorganization, some staff was looking something similar to this, and maybe we even went started reviewing it, that other townships had adopted this code instead of putting something in our, our zoning resolution, um, where if there is a new standard, we can adopt it. We don't always have to choose to adopt it. Maybe we're happy with this version forever. I would assume that 
uh, wants to do it. But we can only enforce the version in front of you yeah. today. Is this a is this a path towards um, a compliance certification when people buy and sell properties? So similar to like an Oakwood or um, some of these other communities that have where when you go to sell a residential or a commercial property, it has to be certified that it's no, up to code mm -hmm. before it's sold. Because yeah, okay. the there's problem. there are there's court cases involving um, charging for those and everything. So I'm just I, I would not support that path. And, and from my perspective as the person who's going to be out there doing mm -hmm. the enforcement, I'm not going after the guy who's got two shingles making off his roof or wants to keep his garbage can in front of his garage instead of hidden away. Mm -hmm. That's HOA stuff as far as I know, from my perspective on yeah. that. If I start micromanaging maintenance, that that's where I would end up, and I, that's all I would do. On the flip side, though, consistent application of the policy or the code is critical because this if you, if you this don't have true. consistent application of it, now you have, well, you let my neighbor do this, yeah. but I don't have to no, do this. No, and I, I, yeah, uh, but as far as, I mean, we've had, I've had some phone calls. I had a guy who wanted me to make people hide their garbage cans out of the way, and I said, sir, sure. <laughs> that's an HOA right. type of a thing. Um, it was uh, for a gentleman in, Okay. As long as you don't leave him laying open at the bottom of his driveway yeah. for a week after, yeah, yeah. Right. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Are, are, are you okay with that? I, I should well, you that. respond to calls that have a complaint. You yes. go out and look at that, and yeah. then when you're on the way, you look at other things. But I agree with you that you wouldn't want to be that picky. Yeah, I, I don't want to micromanage. When I you mean, have that, major that's my things. thought is to not micromanage to that level. Right. I mean, I will obviously address, you right. know, the overgrowth, complain, the grass, yeah. the, the trash, the scrap metal that you're storing on your driveway in big piles, and yes, mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. This, I think is appropriate. this resolution gives us a little more authority to clean up some of those issues that keep coming up that we just don't have the authority to clean. Yeah. So just from a, I'll ask Ms. Frick's standpoint, um, the policy is adopted today, theoretically. Um, and someone who's had their air conditioning units and furnaces in their driveway for the last two years. Um, is this retroactive? It wouldn't be retroactive. I mean, you do, there are meaning, some requirements. Meaning could, could they argue that it's been there for two years? I don't, you know, your standard well, doesn't apply to me. Well, part of this process is there's a posting requirement. Um, okay. And so it's, that's the notice. There's an effective yes. date. And, um, and I don't have it right in front of me though, but I know it has to be posted in several different places in and um, within the township. So it's that's the notice requirements before it becomes effective to allow okay. people to then come into compliance. Yeah. Okay. Now doesn't yeah. doesn't stop argument, but yeah. I understand that. Okay. Right. So it's long as we it, take those steps. Yeah. So. It, it it can be enforced as of once this passes. Um, but then it goes through the process of what we adopt today. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -mm. I'd like to make a motion for a resolution to adopt with modifications the International Code Council, Inc. International Property Maintenance Code 2018 as the property maintenance code for Beaver Creek Township. Adoption date would be today, September 10th, 2018. Second. As presented. Ms. Lala. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kress. Yes. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Next Thanks, item is on page 27 is the biweekly report for the zoning department. Are there any questions? We'll probably see some of this again tonight. So. Are we at a point where we're questioning if we're really going to topple next year's number on, uh, on single family? I think. Uh, this year, yeah. I don't know if, if Nathaniel's Grove really picks up. Yeah, there are. So they're off to a slow start. There are yeah. six lots uh, sold already in phase one of Nathaniel's Grove. Yeah. They are starting to. That are reflected here or not reflected here? No, they're not reflected here. Okay. Um, they are we sold. Haven't received that yeah, one. we yeah. haven't received them. They are sold. I will tell you, they're running into much, much like uh, everybody else is running into with this great economy. Is there's not enough labor out there. Right. So um, yeah. I know they're they've got a lot of projects down in. 
southern part of Beaver Creek Township and in Washington Township right now. Um, and once they can get freed up in those areas, they'll start building like a phase one in McDaniel's Grove. They are cutting in the next phase of, uh, I don't know the number, and they skipped two and go to three, I, I don't know, but the next phase in McDaniel's Grove. So. The only reason I bring it up, I know we're projecting and we're communicating information to the schools um, on a regular basis with regards to this growth curve that we're anticipating, which also then re translates back to our funding as far as that growth curve. But on a national level, we're, we are trending differently in this community than the national trend. And interest rates this morning hit three quarters of a percent higher than they were this time last year. And so is there more to it is my question. Um, and, and nobody has a magic eight ball. Yeah, and I, here, even during the downturn of the economy, we were trending differently than sure. everybody else um, in, in the Dayton area and in Southwest Ohio, um, which I guess is a good thing. Um, I'm just looking at the number and saying we've only got so many more months to go. Right. Are we really going to hit it? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if we'll hit it. It just really depends if they can shift labor around and start going. Yeah. I know their their river reserve was built out yeah. in the first phase. And so. then how long the weather has to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I've heard two or three different sources, weather sources, say we're in for a bad. Yeah. I would venture to guess that there are some developers out there that are wanting to get some asphalt down pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. Okay. Well, the weather's not been very conducive. No, we weren't. Not, we're not during really hurricane season. <laughs> Any other questions or no. comments on zoning? No. Thank you. As far as the bi-weekly for zoning, are there any comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 32 of your packet. Um, it's the purchase of new services for uh, the township. Uh, we are currently not under contract with AT&T or Windstream. Um, we did look at our current pricing uh, and the unknown of what kind of phone system um, we'll be going to in the 2019 budget. Uh, Spectrum is willing to come in with a one-year agreement uh, on those prices to see what what and if we choose, you know, if we choose to go with them, we choose to go with a different uh, provider for the internal phone system uh, and voicemail system. We've had some serious um, issues with the Windstream, which is a month to month right now. Uh, as you, the board knows, our phones were down for one week in, in part of the township. Um, Windstream was pointing the finger back at us that it was on our internal system. Our internal system was fine. Once the, we showed them that, then they were sh blaming AT&T. AT&T is coming back saying it, it was their problem. Ended up on that Thursday, they found out it was a computer chip issue uh, in the city of Dayton that was causing the issue. They replaced it, sent me an email, and um, Battalion Chief Keister that night saying it was fixed. We both got on the phone that night, called the township number, and it was still ringing busy. Um, they did get an earful from me then next Friday. They did reset the system. It was working. Uh, this is not the first time we've had issues with Windstream. We've also had some billing issues with them uh, mm -hmm. and quite frankly customer service issues with them as well. I am recommending we move forward with Spectrum. It will save the township some money, uh, about $9,487 uh, for a one-year agreement. I have the budget justification starting on page 32 and motions on page 33. Any other discussion? No. That being said, I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 09664 to Spectrum for a one year phone service agreement pending legal review in the amount of $33,741.16. And I'll authorize the township administrator to sign to the board. Second. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Craig. Yes. Thank you, board. And the next one will be for Nebula, who uh, services our internal system. Uh, and that would be for them to connect the spectrum service to our Toshiba system. Hearing no other questions or comments, I make a motion to approve purchase request 09665 to Nebula Solutions for carrier conversion in the amount of $705 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. 
Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Thank you, board. Next item is the biweekly activity report. Uh, I still don't have an updated um, reporting system. They are still going with their third party provider in uh, regards to the report. I did include the patch report uh, in the biweekly plus the updated uh, tickets. Do things appear to be trending to where they're working better or worse than they were over the last three months? Uh, they seem to be, at least in regards to the tickets and our, our meetings with them, it's uh, we're kind of plateaued. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of this phase one, not in the middle, we're kind of in the beginning of phase one uh, of the project. I've been on it now for two weeks. Uh, I haven't seen any issues. I know some of the chiefs have been converted over in regards to the services. They haven't had any issues that I know of uh, in regards to that. So things are trending better, but we're kind of plateaued until we get this phase one completed. Okay. Any other questions? On that okay. Road department. Thank you, board. First item is on page 45 of your packet. Uh, we're the replacement of six tires and uh, alignment for engine 67. Mr. Parks here, here to answer any questions. I have a motion on page 45. Questions on the tire replacement? I have none. I have none. Thus, I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 9684 to Carol Wirtz Tire for six tires in alignment for engine 67 in the amount of $3,200 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. <coughs> Next item is uh, Station 62 Roofly. Budget justification is on page 45 with a motion. So it's just been patched? Yes, it's been patched and sealed with silicone sealer for now. And then the repairs are going to be a replacement of some kind? Yeah, actually there's pictures of the tuck pointing that will take place with right. Doing it the correct way instead of putting a piece of aluminum up there and putting the screws out and then putting yeah. silicone over it. And how I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ms. How long has it been that way? When Since it was built. So it was built and put on incorrectly in the beginning? That is going to be my guess because we haven't done any other repairs there. And how old is the building? It was remodeled in... Ten, somewhere in there. Okay. I have no other questions. Make a motion to approve purchase request nine six eight five to A H Sturgill Roofing for roof repairs to station sixty two in the amount of two thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars, and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Question, Ron. real quick, is mm -hmm. uh, A H Sturgill who installed that roof? No. Okay. okay. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Actually, we have started using them because they have a very good track record since before the library project, but that was the Durland. tipping point. Mm -hmm. We started using them because they'll come back and actually do the repairs correctly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. What, is there a guarantee on that? How long will it? It'll probably be on the repairs, no. probably a year in time of materials. Oh. Yeah. Six months? They'll days. probably give you 12. 12 to repair. Yeah. yeah. But once again, we usually, when we go after repairs, we'll go back to them. So if that repair was bad sure. at that time, yeah. if they they're don't come the, back and fix it to deck. our satisfaction, then we're finding somebody else. Right. Or they're not offering other things that need to be done to solve a greater issue. Right. Okay, next item. Thank you, board. On uh, page 45 begins the next item, which is uh, purchase request for station 61 repairs for this area, including the basement. Um, 
and then that budget justification continues on page 46 with a motion. Mr. Clark is here to answer any questions. Will, uh, will this impact the um, humidity and air quality in this room? Yes. Actually... In a positive way? In a very positive <laughs> way. <laughs> yes. Actually, right now, where the problem has been, a, been identified is a twin unit that does the back hall in the basement and the side hall yeah. in this area. Um, so basically, they're going to come in and do the air duct cleaning, clean the coils internally and externally, put in an antimicrobial um, thing to prevent the growth, and then go and do the remediation. And that most of it's in the back hall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Plus we're adding a commercial dehumidifier right behind those doors. And then we have another one. In line though? I can't remember if it was set in line or is it a pretty small? No, it's freestanding. Okay. Because actually there's a sump in that space there. And then a second one someplace in the in the basement area, which should cover about 4,800 square feet mm -hmm. of the basement to get the humidity out of here. And like I said, my write-up, <clears throat> this has kind of been an ongoing problem from day one, but it's starting to get worse and worse and worse, especially in this area. You can really start noticing it. When you walk in from outside, you can kind of get that musty smell mm -hmm. this will address all that plus clean up you know some of the damage that's been done in that back hall so and these folks are certified from step one through step six and they opted for freestanding in both cases versus putting it in line correct or even from where your fresh air is coming in to dehumidify that before yes it comes this, in. this was their recommendation okay. without doing major modifications which would have increased the price sure I did have a question on that. I thought that the sally door was still be a problem with the heat on that sally door and, and that room. Are we going to still try to put a door between? Not currently. We're going to see where this takes us. Are they Were they aware of that? that yes, that, we that actually. That sally we, port we, is yeah. what's caused some of this change in heating well, and actu air conditioning? Actually, we walked the whole basement and evaluated it. That door is insulated. And we really? said, yeah. And we said, you know, here's our issue. We think we're getting some of the moisture and stuff coming in from outside. And most of the, I'll call it the damage, is in that hallway. Right. They think the dehumidifiers getting the moisture out of the air will stop, will, the, will stop the problem because okay. last week or week before it was real hot and humid. You could walk the back hall and some of the ductwork insulated was actually dripping water I was down there already. yeah so we're, we're trying to get that, out. that eliminated so maybe that point okay. and then move on to like you know we could have them in their remediation replace all the ceiling tiles in here we're gonna do that ourselves clean the carpet or replace the carpet down here would be another one because basically the growth we're seeing <coughs> goes to soft surfaces mm -hmm. So that's, let's get the moisture problem taken care of and then we can address the rest as time moves forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and it said full, full protocol, a full protocol process. So I, I, I saw they were gonna set up the negative air, the, 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 you know, the, the chambers, so call it. So are they doing testing pre and post? Yes. That is one thing we ask for is to do pre and post. I will clarify that to make sure, but that is one of the things. But that I, I didn't see. I didn't. We didn't. See, we didn't put it in. I didn't see anything that said pre and post. So right, that is one of the things you we know, talked because about. Because sometimes too, you know, what's identified in that pre-testing, you know, requires a different set of a, a set of rules to address. Right. So that was talked about, and the reason I think that quote is kind of short is we couldn't meet till Thursday of last week. And I told him that, you know, I can't get to you, get back to the board until the end of the month. So I think he
push to get it to me. I think it was actually three no, or five. I, I mean, it's a full right. protocol, and in my mind, full protocol means they're going to do it. Yes, they are going to do so it. That is one just, of so, just so it's clear to them that our expectation is we're expecting that. You know, and, and uh, you know, something else that's unusual is to see a number until that's done. So, well, actually, this company we used back in old station 64 when we had a moisture issue there. And they were good from start to finish. Oh, yeah. That We've got a great track record with them. And then if you look at the recommendations. No, they have a very good track record in the industry. It's just, you know, just my experience usually. Yeah, we'll you know, point that out to them and make sure that that's done. Well, Mr. Parks, I appreciate you addressing this because I know when I was down there what, two weeks ago that the mold and stuff was pretty bad. And, you know, this is a public building and, and our right. we have and employees a public space. here. And I feel impor it's important. So thank you for getting on this. I know you had a lot of on your uh, list of things to do, but thanks for putting it up yeah. to a top priority. Yeah. I think the health of the people here and our citizens that come in is really important to make sure we mi mitigate this. It, it was actually on our list of things to do. We were in here for a meeting last week sometime, and you could smell mm -hmm. uh, that's moldy yeah. or yeah. mildew. It was damp. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, to some extent, it's going to be almost impossible when you have the very, very, very hottest days of the year and the very, very coldest days of the year Dew to, point. to totally, totally 100% right. eliminate it. Now, when they do this, did they say how long it's going to take? Um, we haven't gotten a time schedule, but it, I'm going to guess it's less than a week. And where are they going to be setting up the, uh, the chambers at? Uh, actually, they'll be back in the mechanical room. Because um, we're only doing the two units that do this space. Everything else right now appears to be operating properly other than by putting in the dehumidifiers, we're going to take some of this moisture out of this area. Right, but we don't so know. They've not, again, not tested yet to find out the, if those are still in those ducts, and it just hasn't shown up yet. And right. then what are the, what other, are they going to be doing in a remediation here? The remediation in here, it, once they do the duct cleaning, uh, the vents will be done. As far as the ceiling tile, we're going to have to do that ourselves mm -hmm. to save money and the carpet. So basically that's the only remediation other than when they're completely done with the duct cleaning, they will use an antimicrobial solution sure. in all the duct work. So, so the tiles being replaced and, and the carpet, I'm assuming, being considered because of the threat of the permeation of the mold. Right. So once they do their cleaning and everything, so the environment's going to be as such to where then we're going to come in and do that and re-stir it all up and then have it sucked back through? No. It'll all be done at the same time? <coughs> We're going to try to do it very closely thereafter. Um, part of what they put in the ductwork is a preventative so that it, it can't get sucked. When it, if it gets sucked back in, it's going to get killed. Okay. Because that would be my concern. They get everything done. They take all the masking off and, and the, the, the cloth or whatever they're using, but then we come in and remove the tiles. We're stirring all that back up. Then yeah. we're, we're going to allow it to be sucked right back into the system. I thought the, at least in, I'm not trying to no. dig into right. your business, but at least in past experience, the antimicrobial killed what was present in the ductwork. But unless you put filtration in place, you didn't prevent it from recontaminating your air handling system. Correct. That's my experience. So are they adding a filtration system? Because otherwise, if you go in and you spray it with whatever antimicrobial, you kill whatever's in there. And like Mr. Roberts is saying, you stir it back up, suck it back in, unless you have a filter to stop it at your air handler or pre-duct. You can't do all your you can't do all your ducts, but the pre pre-air handler, then you're just going to circulate it right back in again. That's something I'll have to investigate and talk yeah. over with them whether that needs to be done or before or after. Yeah, what they were we suggesting the, after. What we did in the library, because it's very similar, is we, we did the same process, and then um, the same what we did you. is after we finished the final cleaning and replacement of everything else that, we, that, the, that the library board, the library did inside the building, we replaced the filters after that, right. and then that would met the standards after that. But even, I mean, adding, I agree you need to get the humidity out of the air, and that's number one. 
that even when you put a freestanding humidi dehumidifier in place, it's running air across a coil, reducing it to condensation, putting it into a, a drain or somewhere else. And so, but the exhaust air going it back out, if it's, you're essentially recirculating contaminated air. Yeah, well, that, I'm not familiar with how these dehumidifiers are made, if they have filtration in them or not. Well, just to give an example in here, we've probably got to return air in here somewhere. If, you know, they do the cleaning and then we come in and do the tiles, it's going to be the return air at that point from here to the unit. There may be a filter there, but it's the point from here back to the unit that can get recontaminated and then eventually recontaminate everything else. So one of the things would be to make sure that the system's off and you have filters on the return air until it's done, it would be yeah. just something to ask them. That's something I'll ask them and we'll work they're through the it. Time it. Yeah, they're the experts, so to, yeah. Yeah. the key we'll is we don't want to have to re decontaminate redo it, it. Yeah. Yeah, three months later. Right. So it's kind of like tearing your house apart and leaving the AC on drywall dust goes everywhere. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve purchase request 9686 to environmental doctor for the air system cleaning and remediation in the basement of station 61 in an amount of $9,860 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Fretz. Yes. Thank you, board. Thank you, Mr. Park. The next item is on page 60, and that's the bi weekly report for the road department. Are there any questions? I had none. Do you have any questions? I had none. I had none. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Park. Thank you, Mark. Next item is on page 61 of your packet. It is uh, a request to approve to hire a part time fire inspector. Our chief's here to answer any questions. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Uh, just a uh, brief background and... Uh, yes, sir. So, um, as last meeting or the meeting before, we had discussed uh, our long history of trouble in finding qualified applicants for the position as it had been advertised. Uh, we had advertised three times and gotten two unqualified applicants out of that process uh, since our previous inspector left nearly a year ago. So, um, with the board's permission, we had made the two modifications, changing it to a regular part-time position and uh, changing the pay scale to match our other inspector position. And uh, it was re-advertised and we got a qualified applicant this time, uh, Mr. Carroll, who's sitting back here with uh, Mr. Grogan. So uh, with the board's permission, we'd like uh, the board to, actually, yeah, it's not permission. We'd like the board to <laughs> hire him <laughs> if you're amenable <laughs> to it uh, so that he could then um, finish the uh, uh, pre-employment process and uh, give notice and then begin working for the township. Okay. Any questions? Uh, that being said, I will offer the following resolution for approval, hiring one regular part-time fire inspector. Whereas resolution 2017-262 passed by the board on uh, August 14, 2017, authorized a staffing level of one part-time fire inspector and whereas the fire department currently has no part-time fire inspector, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trust, Beaver Creek Township Trustees, hereby hire the following individual as a regular part-time fire inspector, pending successful completion of the township's pre-employment process at the prescribed rate and pay and benefits in accordance with the Beaver Creek Township Policy man Manual. Uh, the individual is Randy Carroll, and it will be grade six, step one. Further be it resolved, that all formal actions of the Board of Trustees concerning and relating to the adoption of this resolution are being adopted at a duly called and authorized open meeting of the Beaver Creek of Township Board of Trustees on the date set forth above, such meeting being duly called pursuant to and in compliance with all legal requirements including section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Thank you very much. Welcome. Board. Welcome aboard. Welcome Appreciate you coming. Good to meet you. Good luck to you. Next item. 
Yes, the next item, this is a final purchase uh, for the two new command vehicles. Uh, they were not able to get the uh, quote for these antennas back in time for the prior package. And so these antennas will go with the, uh, the prior equipment uh, that's been approved for purchase uh, to be installed in the vehicles uh, before they're deployed. And again, typically this amount would not come before the board, but it is part of a larger package. So we bring it to you so you're aware of the full sure. cost of the project. Does this, and wrap it up, the, we got the vehicles all yes. fitted and painted and striped and... Well, w when it's all done, yes. So we're, we're about 10 days out from delivery, but this should cover all the rest of the outfitting so that um, all the pieces parts are there, they can get it installed, and then, yeah, we can get them put into service. On the road. Yes, ma'am. As a matter of fact, you said the police cruiser just came in, or? Just in the last two hours. Okay, and we're about two weeks behind the police cruiser. Question. I'd like to make a motion to approve purchase request 09671 to Tesco Tesco yep. for the radio antennas for the new vehicles in the amount of one thousand thirty one dollars and fifty eight cents and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. <coughs> Ms. Lois. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kress. Yes. Thank you, board. Ms. Board, next item is on page 62 of your packet, an approval to purchase a uh, replacement for the command post vehicle. And this is a, a little bit different. Um, this is an opportunity uh, cost uh, type of event. Um, we identified earlier this year at the active uh, threat training that um, the command post that we currently have, the, the yellow bus, um, didn't provide all the opportunities that a, something like what the auxiliary has modified to our special needs might be able to accomplish. And at the active threat training, we were providing the command post in effect, two of our staff cars, uh, one that the police were operating out of the back of and one that fire was operating out of the back of. So we started talking about different opportunities, different ways that we could provide a better environment for those type of large scale incidents. So uh, active threat incidents or trainings, um, large, very large fires, or trainings, uh, lost person searches, um, uh, tornadoes or natural disaster type of events, major incidents where you're going to have a, a unified command system with a, a lot, large number of people involved. Um, so in looking at how the auxiliary was set up and their vehicles were, were being utilized, we th thought that that would be a good way to do it. So we started talking about it. And what's happened is since we've been having those discussions, Green Cats has another vehicle in similar condition to our two auxiliary vehicles that is now available. And what we'd like to do is take an opportunity to make a purchase of that vehicle and then retrofit it, but it was not originally a planned purchase for 2018. So it's something that normally we would go through the process and approach it in 2019, uh, but because the vehicle is in good condition and is available, we'd like to go ahead and move on it now. It's a $2,000 purchase, so again, this is something that wouldn't typically come before the board, but because we are talking about capital fleet asset, uh, we felt it was appropriate to have the discussion with you before we moved ahead on the purchase. And the overall project will be more than 2,500 by the time we have to do interior outfitting and things like that. So I wanted to open up for conversation, discussion. Um, if the board's uh, willing, we would move ahead with the purchase, and then we could outfit it in the next budget year cycle or do it early. But again, it was not a planned budgeted process or purchase for this year. <coughs> is it, does the bus run? I mean, yes. Is it going to be dri it's drivable? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's, it is ex it's in exactly the same condition and situation as the two prior auxiliary vehicles. So it has a relatively new motor. It's a little bit older um, unit uh, as far as uh, the, the chassis and frame and everything but it's in the same type of condition as the other two, and we've been very happy with what we got from the, uh, for the other two auxiliary vehicles, which is why we wanted to move on it. So it's not an older system. It's not a, um, it doesn't require any additional maintenance or, or conditioning for us to get it and put it in service other than the interior retrofitting. And do we, will we, um, where will we store it at? We we'll just store it until we retrofit it, or can Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, once we take ownership of it, we would have it here until we were able to do it, whether we did it in this year's budget cycle or next year's budget cycle. Okay. What do you anticipate the total cost to be? Um, I 
kind of earmarked 50,000 and I'm hoping to bring it in less than that because most of the interior is either equipment that we would try and repurpose from the yellow vehicle or that would be less uh, labor intensive than what's in the current auxiliary vehicles and the auxiliary vehicles are about 50,000. For example, we'd not be putting in plumbing or a kitchen that area. This would be strictly tables and seats. Uh, with the electronic piece that we need for the uh, command. And again, most of that would be uh, transitioned over from the old yellow vehicle into this. So it would be replacing the current yellow bus with this new vehicle. What happened to the, um, the old auxiliary van? That was surplus. That was surplus. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I couldn't tell you what we got for it. but mm -hmm. That's what you got for <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but the probably yeah, the forty-eight thousand additional is there. So, mm -hmm. what we have uh, beyond the what, what, if I'm interpreting correctly, um, the, the the outfitting of the existing. Ve so we have a vehicle that has either a functional or non-functional chassis, mm -hmm. and then we have that vehicle's outfitted in a certain manner today. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is that the way that vehicle is outfitted doesn't set doesn't serve our needs. Correct. It, right now, it's a it's still a bus, so it has. No, no. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm the sorry. vehicle we have today. Oh, the yellow, the, the yellow, yellow vehicle. Yeah. Um, it serves our needs, but not as well as what we'd like to replace it with. So, for example, we have two seats essentially, uh, with a bench seat behind it. So you can sit two people at a workstation, and you can have maybe two, three at the most people sitting behind them with no workstation. What we'd be recommending is setting up to have the ability to seat probably 12 people at workstations and have them working in groups uh, designated, for example, for fire, for law enforcement, for schools, for whomever else. Uh, and that, need, I mean, uh, shouldn't that really be a joint purchase? That's what I'm just in in a perfect world, yes, it would. In the city and county. Um, the, uh, but seems like there should be at least two partners at the table. The night of the lost person search, we did essentially take over one of the auxiliary vans and add uh, 10 different agencies in there needed. Um, and it was an opportunity for us to get away from uh, staff that was working um, and to have conversations with uh, highway patrol, uh, Kettering police, fire, everyone who was on scene that was, you know, had to make sure. And of course, uh, the press was there as well. So that gave us an opportunity to go in some place. We were still able, with all the windows, able to see what was going on, but then to have that. We certainly can check with Greene County EMA to see if there's any grants available, because we're, all we're asking for to, in this is to purchase, obviously, the vehicle. You're looking to secure the vehicle yeah. and yes, then yeah. pursue grant money or joint venture with... Yeah, I'd like to see joint venture with the city of Beaver Creek yeah. or schools or mm -hmm. sheriffs or whatever to help yeah. outfit it then. Because it's yeah. going to be... I mean, I don't feel that we should be the responsibility of having putting it all together and spending approximately fifty thousand dollars outfit it for the entire community. I think it's an, the entire community needs to put some skin in the game in this. And I appreciate that and would be I'll be more than happy to pursue it. Um, the historically <coughs> I'll just put it this way, historically the fire department is the organization that cares about unified command and the ability to manage in large incidents uh, corporately. Um, so, and the, the law, uh, active shooter training is a good example. If you recall, there were two fire department vehicles that were operating out of the back of, there were no police department vehicles there. There have been in the past, but this year it was strictly fire department resources. So getting those other agencies to even come up with their own resources, let alone contribute to a, a, a community one may be a challenge, well, but it's a new we're day, willing to and pursue I, that you know, challenge. I think we can all, I don't, I will help. To, to solicit those agencies. We can go to MVRPC, see if they have any money or grant money that can assist in it. This is a countywide effort, so if we put it towards a county um, a solution, we may be able to uh, obtain money from, from that resource. And, mm -hmm. you know, we need to do a dog and pony show and take it out to the communities and say, hey, here's, you know, we need your support on this. And I think, um, you know, I think we can at least ask. Absolutely. You know, instead of us taking on the whole burden. That I'm absolutely willing to do that. I, I, I think too. it's a great idea. We can condo it out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, but you, um, what you need I essentially think. is to preserve the opportunity to do that by purchasing the vehicle before yes, someone right. else does. The, so. 
Okay. There is a chance uh, these will probably come up with some sort of periodicity. I don't know. It's been a year since the last uh, pair that we purchased, so um, there's a chance it could we could have another opportunity a year from now. So I don't want it to sound like this is the only chance we would ever get. But this is a bird in the hand opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought for the 2000, it would be worth trying to pursue it at this okay. point. But and road department has already gone, looked at the vehicle. And no, that we would do that before we okay. make a final agreement. Yes, yes, but yes. I wanted to secure the funding before I asked Mr. Parks to spend time on yep. it. Yep. Okay. All right. I support the concept. So. If I make a motion to approve purchase request 08871 to Green Cat for the surplus vehicle in the amount of $2,000 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kress. Yes. Thank you very much, board. Something I uh, should have mentioned, and it's nothing that would impact the purchase, so I, I don't want you to think that I'm adding stuff after the fact, but I did want to recognize the folks that have put a lot of time into the yellow bus. Um, almost all of the interior work on that vehicle has been done volunteer uh, by our radio folks and our uh, it's the amateur radio folks a uh, number of auxiliary members uh, is there anybody I'm missing okay so it's it, it has been a collaborative effort so far from that perspective and we would we would look to um, try and retain that type of ownership but uh, securing f additional funding from the other uh, participants is something we will pursue okay thank you very much thank you thank you board next uh, item is an update on fire station 65 so uh, fire station 65 is uh, I've detailed out here um, the prices came back much higher than we expected um, so much higher that uh, we're not even going to ask the board to accept the GMV um, it's uh, it's not even palatable to the committee uh, what we have done is ask the committee, um, well, prior to the bidding, we did go back and we sharpened pencils with the design and tried to uh, reduce a number, uh, cost in a number of areas uh, that we didn't think would affect the performance of the building. Um, and so the bid package reflected those changes. Coming back with the bid still much higher than what was, uh, was budgeted, um, what we've done is ask them to go back. Uh, the architect and the contractor are going back and making substantive construction changes. So, for example, eliminating one of the bays, um, eliminating the drive around uh, uh, driveway and apron, um, eliminating the communications tower, some major components to see what that will do to the cost. And then um, once they have those numbers, they'll bring that back. We'll ha essentially have a modified GMP for the board to vote on um, and then at that point we can make a decision on whether to proceed or not um, for what it's worth we're not particularly optimistic that we're going to be in a position to proceed but we want to do due diligence because of the uh, time and effort we have into the process thus far and uh, we're expecting that information back the week of the 17th so we should have an update for the board before your next meeting and then we can make a determination at that point as to how to proceed um, I, I don't think it's a fruitless um, endeavor to get that uh, modified that modified quote um, mm -hmm. and proposal um, so that whether you're making that decision three months, six months, or a year from now, um, you know the delta, yes, or at least an, an anticipated delta between mm -hmm. um, your full-blown get, get, your, get your wish list satisfied versus an interim um, that could be expanded later if, if needed. So it's worthwhile to pursue that. So, and then we, uh, regardless of the outcome of this, we own the design. Yes, sir. So for um, for the, the, the full-blown version, mm -hmm. the, the, the number that is reflected here. Yes, sir. Okay. And the drawing package has been updated to reflect? It is in the process bid. of if it has not already okay. been. Okay. okay. Just so we have an as-bid. That's where I'm after. So you, you control that. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So this is informational. There's no. There's no decision point at this point. For yeah, we have more than we can afford. Correct. Okay. Um, the the GMP we have 30 days from the original, and uh, the next meeting will be well within that time period, and uh, we'll make a determination then as to what our recommendation would be, and then obviously ask the board. Okay. For and if we need a special meeting, then we'll we'll address it there. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next update is the safer grant. Um, we did receive the safer grant um, uh, 
that have to work in together to put uh, the financial impacts of the safer grant. And as the board will recall, that we uh, earlier this year the board did approve going after this grant funding. Um, and we're putting together what kind of impact that would be based on the reimbursement from the federal government. Good. Okay. So the we have one timeline issue, and I've requested an extension depending on which date you use, and there's about three dates right now, and that's one of the clarifications I've sought from our grant coordinator. Um, we could have to accept the grant either the Friday before the board's next meeting, the 22nd, I think it is, mm -hmm. through the 24th, which is the board's next meeting, and I've requested from them an extension to the 25th um, so that we could make sure our due diligence was done and have the next regular scheduled meeting. If we do not get the extension and it's the worst case on the dates that they've provided, um, we may need to accept prior to the board's next meeting. So there would either be a request for a special meeting sure. or a determination on whether the signature authority the board's already granted and a letter of support would be sufficient to justify. So we'll be in communication with you before then to determine which of those we need to make sure that uh, if we want to pursue the opportunity, we have the ability to do so. Okay. But and generally speaking, it looks very favorable for us on the financial side. Okay. And you'll provide a full uh, yes, total sir. cost um, investment <coughs> net and uh, current Offsets funding, projected and funding. Else. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just I did not have a chance to complete it before today's meeting, and I didn't want to have something half-baked nope, for you. that's fine. We can, the board will accommodate okay. for the special meeting as, as needed. Thank you very much. Okay. Anything else from fire? Uh, yeah. Next item would be just biweekly activity report starting on page 65. Got a I question. have a question. On the safer grant, mm -hmm. so is that for, that's for hiring new firefighters? Yes, ma'am. For a fire station that is two fire stations away potentially? That's to hire new firefighters. Where we choose to house them is up to us. Correct. Okay, so then you would absorb them into your current. Yes, ma'am. Rotation and mm -hmm. then. Okay, and have you met with Jan on the funding part of that? No, ma'am. Because some of the numbers that I saw that were taken to the um, county auditor last week raised concerns. So I That's would, the first I've heard of that. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking if you're asking, okay. would you please have a conversation with her mm -hmm. just so that there's a, if you, if this is going to happen and it goes past, like you said, or if it's something prior to, I would just feel much better knowing that a conversation had been had with mm -hmm. you and, and Jan regarding that. S since you're both here, what numbers what were a concern were at the county? Um, that the carryover for 2019 was at $59,000 when you take out um, contingencies and things like that. So, um, what, what do you mean when you take out contingencies? When you present to the budget, you mm -hmm. present without the contingencies number. He wants to know what's your revenue, what are your expenses. Mm -hmm. And if you just do that basic simple math, the amount was significantly lower than it has been in the past. To the tune of in the past it's been $2 million, and if we're talking from going you know, two years ago to $2 million to now to $59,000, then that's my question. Mm -hmm. Just to make okay. sure that you have that buffer that you think you have. It, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you don't at all. I'm just asking to please okay. have that conversation so that there's a, a security um, from my office and, and for you as well. That's all. It okay. was merely just a question. Okay. Alex, does that track with your conversations at the county? That's why we submitted the, the budget, and our budget commission, and the questions were regarding other funds. There was no direct questions that I recall from that, but I did tell them that we are asking for a levy next year. So we are in the last year of the 10-year funding cycle. So we, we anticipated that carryover to be less and less every year. It's just a lot of new people. If it's a lot of new um, salaries, benefits, that's a, it's a lot of yeah, money. Just that, that's all. So the grant covers, just so everybody's aware, the grant covers uh, salaries and, and, and all benefits. 75% for the yes. first two years and 35% for the third year. But it's year. also reimbursement. So mm -hmm. we have to come up with it beforehand. So Correct. just to make sure that we have that money to come up with it beforehand is, is all I'm asking. That's okay. it. No. I'll yeah, include that in the packet for the okay. board so you have that Great. as well. Thank you.
Any other questions on the bi-weekly? I have none. Uh, it looks like we're trending lower this year for overdoses. Yes, sir. It seems like uh, last year was a, a fairly big spike, and I wouldn't say we're normalizing yet, uh, but we are substantially less. I think we're two-thirds of where we were year over year last year. Uh, so that's a good improvement. I don't know what to attribute it to because we end up, we're the response side of it, so I don't know what the prevention side is. So I don't know if they're being extremely effective or if the problem has moved out of Beaver Creek or a combination of maybe multiple factors. Most likely that's what it is. But yes, sir, the impact to us and uh, the emergency response side of it is we are about two thirds of where we were. So we're hoping last year was a spike and that we slowly get back to our, our prior years. We've always had a little bit of, a, of an issue, um, but we're still well above a little bit of an issue right now. It'd be interesting just if you heat mapped it to, under, to look at year over year. I'm not asking for another report. I'm just saying it would be interesting <laughs> to understand that if 70% of your issues hypothetically were at one gas station mm -hmm. um, and you, through interdiction, you eliminated that problem. Yeah. You're, but, the, but the incidence at residences has stayed the same constant. or gone up. If that, so it'd be interesting to know. That it might tell a story that hey, your efforts had an impact. Um, but you're not, you, but you're having no impact on the incidents at the residences mm -hmm. it, because it's, it's a broader issue. Yeah. So it could just be interesting. Okay. That's, we could probably work on something like that. So it's uh, almost really more of a question for the sheriff than for you. Okay. Um, but it just, you know, your call volume and your run volume, if, if, mm -hmm. your, if your runs to those locations as hotspots, traditional hotspots, has decreased. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know. So, but okay. Any other questions for fire? Thank you, board. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Frick? Nothing today. Uh, Ms. Ahrens? Nothing, thank okay. you. Okay. And MVRPC, anything new there? We had a presentation with uh, Miami Valley Military Affairs to the whole MVRPC crowd, and they seemed to like that. They encouraged people to join. Um, and it's kind of a, we, were, we, we went ahead and Remodified the tech um, grants uh, last week, and we proposed the new changes that d did not affect the Beaver Creek Township at all. So um, that was approved. So other than that, that was all. Good. Green County Regional Planning. Uh, I had a let's see, one item on the agenda for River uh, Reserve Final Plan Review for Phase for Section One Phase One A Alpha. Uh, it was approved without any stipulations. The one comment that was made was that uh, our acceptance notes need more info. So that's the one thing that came up from uh, from the powers to be. I don't know if those notes come from us or from commissioner. It would come from all the different uh, seats at the table, wouldn't it? So well, it comes from all the different seats at the table. However, the all funds back to the regional plan, Green County Regional Plan, sure. those different But nothing that would have come from us. That was the only. It could have. It could have. It could have. We're it one of the several seats, but it could come from DPNL. It could be coming from. Well, it was specific Vectrum. to Beaver Creek Township only. Okay. It this wasn't mentioned for the other. Maybe reach out to the. Um, the new director and just ask for clarification on what they're looking for. Yeah, so. to okay. And other than that, do you have any health department? No, we, it's only one meeting a year. Okay. Yeah, there was really nothing else that occurred. On Green County? Mm -hmm. Okay. The schools, uh, Alex, we obviously have the meeting this evening. Yep, I met with the superintendent last week. We had a meeting tonight, met with the city manager last week. Just kind of followed up on some things at a joint meeting and uh, update on several projects that uh, affect both the city and the township. Okay. Anything on uh, restoration advisory board? Nothing new there. Another me meeting scheduled okay. yet. And township association. Tuesday night. And where's that at? This time? Uh, it's at the health department at the new building. New health department. I will not be able to go there, so hopefully one of you can go. I'm gonna try to go. 
and investment oversight uh, committee there is no nothing new to report there any other comments from trustees as well as mr roberts i have nothing i have nothing um the only thing i had a, a couple things just um one i had spoken to uh, mr zaharieff and this was um kudos to our road crew um, with regards to um, getting out and um, taking care of uh, catch basins and storm sewers that are damaged. Um, it was just an observation, um, and I just asked the administrator to make sure that we have respirators available, at least for employees. Um, Addressing that first thing in the morning. When they are saw cutting uh, asphalt and concrete, and, 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 they, they, and when they disappear in the cloud of dust, it's more of a, just a concern for them. Um, and I understand it's, it's not comfortable to wear in the heat or humidity necessarily, but um, that was just more of a concern. And then um, if there's anything in the spirit of um, September 11th being tomorrow, um, if there's anything that the township um, can do to encourage if they haven't already, we have at least one um, firefighter, Young, um, uh, that uh, Chief Young, that. And then we have one other individual that supported um, either recovery, rescue, or um, the activity at 9-11. Yeah, Lieutenant Siebold. Is Siebold, that. okay. Um, but just to, make, to help encourage them if they haven't already um, signed up for that victim uh, compensation fund. Um, so anything that we can do there to encourage that or if any support they need from the township, um, that we, can, we can do that. So not that they need anything today, but if they need it in the future. So. Otherwise, anything else to come before the board? I'd like to mention that uh, tonight at the Beaver Creek High School, um, Doug Cope will be doing a presentation on 9-11. Um, he was there with the Task Force One, and there'll be some original slides that a lot of people have not seen. It's free, open to the public. It starts at 7 and should end by 9 o'clock. Great. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Craig. Yes.